a very good evening class 10th this is seema maki jani's channel chemistry made easy for you all the topic for the class today is ionic compounds and their properties so before i actually go to ionic compound properties you need to know what exactly are ionic compounds there is a, there is already a video on my channel for class 10th unit 2 metals and non metals you would find a video on ionic compounds you can refer to that particular video for the information but before i actually go to the properties i would like to go to the ionic compounds once again so that your concepts for ionic compounds are clear the example that i am taking is that of potassium fluoride as you very well know ionic compounds are formed by electron transfer from the metal to the non metal now out of these two identities which i have just taken potassium is the metal and if i draw the lewis dot structure for potassium it becomes k with one electron because that's the valence electrons i talk about fluorine which is the non metal i draw the lewis dot structure for fluorine fluorine has seven electrons in the outermost shell this is how you're supposed to draw the lewis dot structures in case you are struggling with this topic also please refer to my channel the topic of lewis dot structure by seema makijani and this would be cleared so once you draw this how can this potassium be stable by completing its octet so for that purpose and how can this fluorine be stable that too is by completing the octet now this octet can be completing if fluorine gets an electron from somewhere so potassium gives its valence electron to fluorine leading to potassium having a loss of electron so k positive fluorine having a gain of electron so f minus since the charges are neutralized we write them as kf now talking about this kf if i have many potassium fluorides i hope you understand they would not be far off from each other this fluoride will attract this potassium this fluoride would attract this potassium and hence you would have an ordered arrangement of the positive and negative ions in this way have a close look what have i done i have deliberately arranged the positive ions around the negative ions and the negative ions around the positive ions this is exactly how it happens have a look at this potassium this potassium is surrounded by one f the other f the other f and the other f so it is surrounded by the negative lee charged ions and if you look at any other negative ion this is surrounding by the four potassium ions so there is a strong ionic force of attraction in case of ionic compounds fine so you have strong ionic force of attraction therefore these ions are tightly packed and you would get positive ions and negative ions arranged in an order positively ions charged ions are called as cations negatively charged ions are known as anions fine moving on to the properties of ionic compounds we've already discussed what an ionic compounds are like and they are known to have strong inter ionic force of attraction where i'm talking about inter ionic it is between the positively charged ion and the negatively charged ion and these ions are tightly packed they are strongly attracted because of this reason the first physical property that i'm taking is physical state as you very well know physical states are three solids liquids and gases now since there is a strong inter ionic force of attraction therefore the ions are closely packed since they are closely packed therefore they are generally solids we find them to be generally in the solid state coming to the second property which is your melting and boiling points this is again requires the breaking of the inter ionic force of attraction because you need to increase the intermolecular spaces by breaking the intermolecular force of attraction now since the intermolecular force of attraction is high you require 
a large amount of heat to break the force of attraction therefore the melting and boiling points are very high for ionic compounds coming to the next property which is electrical conductivity when i talk about electrical conductivity we are talking about who will conduct electricity ions ions we already have in ionic compound but the ions should be free and mobile if the ions are not free and they are not mobile then they will not be able to conduct electricity that is why electrical conductivity is not possible in solid state while if you have it in the molten state or you have it in the aqueous solution then we find that they conduct electricity because under these two conditions your positively charged ion and the negatively charged ion are mobile and if they are mobile they can move only then can they conduct electricity fine coming to the last property it is observed that ionic compounds are soluble in water they are water soluble common salt for example say are water soluble and they are insoluble in case of organic solvents now what is the word organic solvents actually organic solvents are carbon containing solvents for example petrol kerosene diesel etc benzene these are some of the solvents which are carbon based and your organic compounds are made up of carbon so these solvents in these solvents you will never found your ionic compounds will never be soluble in these particular solvents so when we talk about solubility of the ionic compounds it is with respect to water fine i hope with this you are clear with the main important properties physical state they are generally solids melting and boiling points are high because the strong force of attraction electrical conductivity again is difficult when we talk about the solid state again because the ions are tightly packed so if the ions are to be mobile you need to heat it only then the ions will be mobile and they will conduct electricity coming to solubility solubility is related to the water being soluble water is also a polar solvent and in water your ionic compounds are soluble fine with this i end the topic of properties of ionic compounds thanks a ton bless you kids please share please like if you are finding the topics understandable